Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we're here to educate you a little bit more this week about counting sheep, need some sleep, because so many of you out there are not sleeping and we hear about it. And it causes so many problems like memory issues, mood changes, weakened immunity, high blood pressure, weight gain. And we're going to address all of those questions today and what it does and how to fix it, some sleep remedies that you may be missing. And did you actually know that there is a body clock that goes along with waking up at certain times of the night that can cause you to know which organ you need to work on so you'll know how to fix it. So we have a whole lot to get to today. Dr. Lewis is going to, as he always does, inform us about what we can do to make our lives better. We have got tons of questions from you guys. Thank you so much for participating in that and sending in questions. At the end of the show, I'll tell others how they can also send in questions. So, Dr. Lewis, let's just jump right in and get to why are we counting sheep? Why are we counting sheep? And we're in need of sleep. So, Why are we? Well, I thought about that at 4.30 a.m. this morning when I woke up. Um, sleep is very elusive for many people, and the problem is there's so many different reasons. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the people that continue to listen and to share this with other people. We've had just an incredible uh, amount of referrals lately, so I do appreciate you. And and then there's the people like Gary and Amarillo that just keeps doing the right thing over and over again, and Rob in Michigan, uh, Brian in Tennessee, et cetera, et cetera. But there's so many people that do this, and... You never know what Janet and I, or we never know what we say that's going to motivate someone because last month we were on the Survival Podcast, and I suggest most of you check this out. Jack Spierko is a pretty awesome and incredibly intelligent man. I gave my worst interview ever, and I cannot, it, it just blew my mind how many people came in because of that, and they said, well, you were authentic because I got a little emotional, but... So we hope that we say something that motivates you to get better sleep because that can be the hub of getting healthy. There there are so many different reasons, you know, and and what we can see on lab, let me just get to that. We check the cortisol level, and we can tell if you're real sluggish into adrenal fatigue or your adrenals are going too much. And that's, uh, you know, that's the people that can't, sleep at night because they're worrying about something they're they're worried about the exit down the road 500 miles away no don't worry about things you know let it go be peaceful um one of the things i think is the big reason i'll get into some of the nutritional and physiological things but one of the reasons i think we have such issues is we become a nation that's busy and i don't think busy means fruitful or productive uh, and we kind of get hooked on that it's like i'm busy well, you know, sometimes Janet and I feel guilty when we just have nothing to do. And it's like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's move. And that's not necessarily a good thing. I feel guilty. So actually, I asked Janet this morning if I can have tomorrow afternoon off and go pig hunting. So I'm going to play hooky. And sometimes you need to play hooky and you need to relax. You need to get grounded. You need to get back to nature. So. You know, you mentioned uh, relaxing and and stress and everything. I made a correlation that I thought was pretty interesting. It, well, my dentist noticed it a while back was that I was uh, grinding my teeth or clenching my teeth. And I thought, I, I don't do that. I've never done that. And I started really trying to pay attention to, am I doing that? And I noticed that when we're off traveling in our RV or we're having downtime, like over a holiday that I don't clench my teeth, but I come back to work, and even though I love my job and, you know, and I feel like I'm not stressed, I am obviously thinking about the next day. So at night, I'm laying there in bed clenching my teeth, and it's anxiety because she, I'm... She's a problem solver. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm trying to solve problems while I'm sleeping, and it and it causes me to wake up with my mouth hurting from it. And I thought, well, I'm going to try adding in L-theanine last night because that's for anxiety. And I had the best night's sleep. I was laughing in my dreams. I woke up this morning. My jaw was not clenched together. She was laughing at me in her dream. I was doing that. But um, <laughs> I just thought, well, there's some simple things you can do if you can't take off work and go 
you know, play outside like you'd like to. There's some things you can take that do help with that kind of stuff. Well, you know, that, that's always a good point. There's so many different possibilities. I'm going to try to rush through them because uh, <clears throat> we have so many questions to get to. Uh, chronic insomnia is kind of a big deal. And, and don't just quit real quick and easy because some people say, well, I tried that. It didn't work. Or, I tried melatonin. and It didn't work. It's like, or I tried melatonin. and I had bad dreams. Cut the dosage down and go up gradually. I read the other day in a podcast how the uh, melatonin can be used for treating cancer, and I quoted the uh, cancer entity that studied this. When you get around 9 to 10 milligrams, it gets to be the youth hormone. And, and yeah, you may wake up groggy the next day, and that's gonna we're going to get into the detox because we had a good question about that. So melatonin is a really, really good thing. We have that. We sell a lot of it. I know it works, and I take it at night, too. And the big one is uh, 5-HTP as well, because that one, those are for, I guess I like the problem-solving things, but people that can't go to sleep, they're just rewinding the day in their mind, and they're going, well, you know, I should have done this, I should have said this, and they lay there, and then all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, it's almost midnight. 5-HTP stops those thoughts It helps with mood, weight loss, and sleep. You take it about 30 minutes before you go to bed. We do the 100 milligram because that's for adults. They've got a 50 milligram for for children, but it will actually stop the thoughts. It won't keep you asleep like melatonin keeps you under, like Dr. Lewis was talking about. But 5-HTP takes the edge off at the front of it. So one of those and one of the melatonin would be a great combination. And uh, as Janet mentioned earlier, the body clock, and I was up at 4.30. It's real common for me. Well, the uh, the body clock is like, for, for lungs, is 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. So, And I, I've always had a lung bronchial uh, weakness there, but I don't know how that converts with the time change and all that. But I, I would suspect, you know, that's why you hear me clear my throat a lot. Uh, some other things is... Calcium and magnesium, and I'm not a huge fan to push calcium, but I do push a lot of magnesium, and you can take a warm bath, not necessarily a shower. <clears throat> you can take a warm bath, and, of course, that's going to increase your vascularity. That's going to relax you. Many people put magnesium in the tub. They, they love to get magnesium through the skin, which does work. That's why Epsom salts works, because that's a magnesium. I do think it's much more effective it it does work getting it through the skin but i think it's more effective just to swallow a capsule or two rather than trying to get it entirely through the skin but so the warm bath you know with magnesium can work uh anxiety stress and grief you know that can you know help us uh, stay awake at night when we need to be sleeping well you talked about the chinese body clock we probably should take it in order a little bit so that people can maybe break down and decide hey may that's me If you can't go to sleep and it's 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, it could be that it's your gallbladder because from 11 to 1, according to the Chinese body clock, which we don't know what time zone they were in when they wrote it, but um, (laughs) the gallbladder is whenever that is dumping and trying to repair. So we have a lot of people say, well, I can't sleep between those hours. Then at 1 o'clock, I'm asleep, but then it's too late. And that goes back to we should eat less and we should eat way, way less heavy meals and that's really true i've had my gallbladder you know wake me up more than once because i would eat incorrectly think ice cream sherry i talked to sherry down in elkhart about that yesterday yeah or a big piece of heavy meat or something at night that you just can't break down and for those of you that say well i don't have a gallbladder anymore you know that's you know i'm still awake during that time but my gallbladder's missing just because it's missing doesn't mean that you're not still trying to digest during that you know that those hours so maybe try digestive enzymes with your food um from let's see that's 11 to 1 from 1 to 3 is liver so you've got gallbladder and liver and you know dr bliss will have to tell you but they're intertwined somehow (laughs) and when one starts working then the other one starts working after that so from 11 to 3 you could basically have all kind of digestive problems and you can't sleep correct yeah, and, you know, there's there's certain things you have to consider, uh, uh, and it depends on who you listen to. There is an issue with what you eat in the evening. Some people say, well, don't do carbs or simple carbs or sugars after 6. 
And then there's other people that say, well, you need to eat a spoonful of honey. Well, it's got to do with glycogen and glucagon in the liver, and I don't want to get into that. But you need to take care of your liver because that is the major detoxification organ, you know, maybe in addition to bladder and colon. But well, if you're a heavy alcohol drinker at night from one to three, your liver may not like you. So, you know. Think of something that will help support the liver. We use a product called Liver Support and Detox. Yeah, it's really incredible uh, the way it's put together. And if you have uh, elevated liver enzymes, even if it's in the reference range, if it's elevated more than about 24, 26, a little bit higher than that, I add taurine, which is an amino acid which helps thin the bile so that it runs through and helps dissolve that much more quickly. But taurine also helps the brain function and also helps heart function and you know muscle rebuilding. And so then you get from three to five, and like Dr. Lewis said, that's uh, lung meridian. Well, now that the heat and the cold is hit and you know, we're running our heaters at night, the air is really dry. Um, then your lungs are not very happy with you. So we do several things for that. We first run a humidifier in the room to try to keep moisture in the air to help the lungs. The other thing you can do, which helps your liver as well, well is a product called NAC. It's N-A-C. It's N-acetylcysteine. And uh, what it does is help thin mucus so that you can expel it. So if you do have a lung problem, like Dr. Lewis and I both do, at least it doesn't get stuck and become pneumonia, um, and it helps you sleep because in the morning you'll just notice that you're just getting rid of mucus because it's got to come out because the NAC did that. And the NAC is a precursor to glut- glutathione, so that helps with your detoxification pathways. And then also raise their immune system, right? Absolutely. Uh, we are very fond of a new product that we have. I love, love, love it. It's called Immune Essentials. And Dr. Lewis can kind of tell you why it's so good, but, oh, my lungs are very happy on that one. Well, it's a mushroom product. We had this uh, guy come in yesterday, and he's very, very intelligent. He says, well, I was researching, and there's this thing, and it's got the most well-researched mushroom in it. And he was looking it up. He said, um, you know, it's lion's tail and all all that. Yeah, we got it. He said, well, what about cordyceps? Yeah, we got it. What about shiitake? Mataki, Rishi, I said, we got it. It's all then in there. And theoretically, you're supposed to be able to take two of those a day throughout the season here through um, the winter months. And supposedly it keeps the flu away. I cannot tell you that it does that. This is our first year to have it. I'm telling you I'm doing it because I don't want the flu. But um, it's about keeping your immune system up. So that's called immune essentials. But we're having people that have low white blood cell count that it seems it's early in the game, but it seems to be coming up, which higher white blood cell count to get it from a two or three up to a four or five means greatly enhanced immune system. Right. And then there's five to seven a.m. So if you're one of the early risers and you don't want to be an early riser, but you have to get up because you can't sleep. That's because your colon is giving you a problem. That's when it's supposed to excrete the toxins. Yeah, so you've been busy all night with your gallbladder stuff and then your liver, and then at 5 a.m. your colon says, hey, let's get busy and let's uh, get this on. So what can we do for our colon, Dr. Lewis, so that maybe it will let us sleep through the night? Probiotics? Yeah, eat eat less and eat better. I keep harping on this eat less, and it's like, well, I I thought I was 5'10 for all these years, and two insurance physicals later, as I get older and the discs get thinner and thinner, both physicals say I'm 5'11, so who the heck knows. Uh, But I'm relatively thin, and I still need to eat less, and I sleep better when I eat less. And if you get enough fiber, okay, the fiber absorbs water and gives the uh, walls of the intestine something to grip on as it has its peristalsis and it helps you excrete much more correctly. And, and when you have a bowel movement, it should be easy to clean up. If it's messy, you're doing something wrong. It should be real quick, real easy, painless and clean. And maybe part of the reason people are getting up from 5 to 7 in the morning going to the bathroom is because they have constipation issues and they didn't go during the day all day before, which 
for those of you new listening out there, you should be going within 30 minutes to an hour after you eat each meal. And it's not easy to always accomplish with many people, and that's why we push magnesium. If you're constipated, which is one bowel movement per day or less, magnesium citrate. If you're not constipated, do the active mag, which is, you know, chelated. Right, so try to get your bowel movements to move during the day instead of waiting for the 5 to 7 o'clock hour. And so then uh, we want to talk a little bit about what happens whenever you're not sleeping right. Did you know that you'll have trouble the next day with thinking and concentration? And I can tell you for a fact that's true. You just don't get enough rest. and You don't really care what people ask you because you just want to go back to bed, which makes you moody. It makes you emotional and quick-tempered. She gave me the look when she said that. Mm, it also makes your memory not be good. So what did you say? <laughs> it may not be that you have a memory issue. It may, not, it may be that you're just not sleeping right. And you're probably saying, well, you know, those of you are that are new that don't, don't really know what we do, what does that got to do? How do you see any of that on lab? I know that's the question you're asking. Uh, we actually can see some of this on lab of whether why you're not sleeping through high liver enzymes, right, Dr. Liz? Uh, yeah, high liver enzymes. I just looked at one. It had a high alkaline phosphatase, which is a liver enzyme. But that also has major components, you know, to the gut health as well as potential bone issues. And I bet you that young lady up in, I don't know where she is, Wisconsin, Minnesota, somewhere up there, she's probably having sleep issues. I'm going to call her here in a few minutes. Uh, so that would be low vitamin D. Uh, that can be good uh, if the calcium is off, too high, too low. Unfortunately, they don't normally test for magnesium. And when you do, you got to do the RBC magnesium to see what's in the cell, not what's in the serum. So you can tell uh, white blood cells and their ratios of where they are versus what's going on in the body if you have that immune system challenge. So there's way, many, many, many ways to check this out. Cortisol levels being too high will cause you not to sleep. That'll, that's the, you people out there that won't go to bed early, your night owls, because you usually have high cortisol. And the ones that have low cortisol are usually the ones that want to sleep way too long, which is also a problem. The low cortisol are usually the ones that had high cortisol and fatigued uh, their adrenal glands. And then we look at DHEA if you choose to get your uh, hormones. And DHEA comes from the adrenal glands also, just a different part than where the cortisol comes from. And it's very important. And I always use the analogy as well. Geez, you're on interstate and your cortisol is so high, you're doing 135 miles an hour. So it's either you're going to blow an engine or crash and burn. Or if your cortisol is low, I tell people, well, you're 35 miles per hour on the interstate and somebody's going to run over your butt because you have fatigued adrenal glands. And blood sugar can also be a cause of it, right? And I hated to get into that because now you're getting personal. Uh, yeah, it, it does. And I notice when I eat ice cream, I'm thinking of you, Sherry. Um, we had this conversation yesterday. I don't sleep really good at all. And I start sweating in the middle of the night. And that's because your blood sugar spikes. And then you feed the yeast. And that's another thing. So many people are so full of yeast. And and I'm, I'm one of them. And, and since, well, this gonna, we're going to get into this during the questions. But uh, yeast is... People say, can you kill it? It's like, hell, I don't know. I never killed it in me. I, you can make it go off in the corner and quit bugging you, but you got to quit feeding the yeast. So, sorry, Bluebell. Mm, that was a bad spider bite is what caused that, though. It's not because he eats incorrectly. Well, I, I lost my immune system because of what they had to do to save me from the spider bite, plural. But we do want to make sure we answer as many of these questions as we can. And thank you again for writing these in. And if you're wondering how do I how do I ask a question, you can go on shooting straight with Dr. Lewis and ask him to be in his Facebook group where everybody writes questions and has and really great recipes like Tara that puts things on there for us. And um, it's a big, fun group. And you can also call in like one of our questions did. He said, I don't do Facebook, but I have a question. So he called the office. And uh, I'm going to make sure I address that, too. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So there's numerous ways to get in touch with us to do that. Uh, Maggie had a question about uh, comparing adrenal response and stress relief. And since we're talking about sleeping, 
those are probably two good ones that might be important for that. Can you tell her the difference? Yeah. And, you know, on the shooting straight, I said, well, it's adrena calm versus stress response. And she said, whoops, I got the uh, the name's wrong. The adrena calm is for people that have the high cortisol and you can't put your brain down at night. And it's like, just shut up and go to sleep. Well, that just makes it worse. So the adrena calm, it's a... Uh, Relora, and that is some really high class stuff. Uh, magnolia bark, and it has a very high amount for not much money. I'm amazed how they do that. And if you read about magnolia bark, it'll blow you away. Uh, the sensoril, which is the really high class ashwagandha extract. So these are a super adaptogenic herbs. Janet read about uh, magnolia bark one time and said, I said, oh, geez, i got to have that. So she bought it, and it was like, holy cow, expensive. But you read about it, you want to do it. Well, this Adrenacom has a lot of it in there, and it's not. I don't know how they do it for the price. It's not expensive. So that's if you're stressed out and everything gets your goat. It's more for people that have anxiety. And then for people that have blown their immune systems or their adrenal uh, gone into adrenal fatigue, or you just feel super stressed all the time. A stress response can really work for pretty much anybody. But it has that acetyl L-carnitine that I talked about uh, at another podcast. It's got the ashwagandha, say, uh, blueberry, ginkgo, eletherio, and but it's got something called GPC. That is something that's super, holy geez, really good for brain function to put the fire out in the brain it's in our prenatal to help you make a better brain and nervous system for the baby we have it in different forms that gpc is absolutely holy cow fix your brain good stuff and then it's got the phosphatidylserine so you can use that either way i love the stress response i take it and it gives me incredible energy sustained energy all through the day and Maggie also wants to know, why does eating eggs make her tired? Is that a food allergy? I don't really know. I guess it could be. But uh, sometimes you just eat too much and you don't have the proper digestive enzymes. And so your body's utilizing all of its energy for digestion. So I was going to go try to shoot a pig the other day and I ate two bowls of Janet's chili. And boy, she can make some, oh my God, slap your mama, good Texas chili. And instead of stopping and eating less... I ate two, and it's like I was so dang tired, Maggie, that I couldn't go pig hunting. So eat less, but uh, take digestive enzymes. You know, eggs, do they don't make me tired, but they're very hard for me to digest. Also, I usually do a couple of our digestive essentials with them, but I also add in extra betaine and pepsin, and that's hydrochloric acid. So maybe you don't have enough hydrochloric acid to break down the protein from the egg. So you might consider that. And Deborah is wondering uh, if what is in the stress response that you sell, which I think you already covered. Right. And how do you guys test for possible hormone imbalances? Well, like for females, we test estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA, and that's usually enough to get you going. But instead of one or two tests for the thyroid, we do five, which is not always complete, but five is a lot better than the one or two that you might get somewhere else. So that's how we test the hormones. And that's good because you talk about get somewhere else. We had a lady in here yesterday that um, she had just a part of her thyroid done. And when we ran it, we ran all of it. And we said, have you ever had a um, been diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease, which is an autoimmune problem? She said, no. They told me my thyroid was fine. And her thyroid was not fine. It was way out of range. And she says, why am I fat? I'm grumpy. I have this. I have that. My my hair's hair's falling falling out. out. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, we added on a TPO, a thyroid peroxidase, and it turns out she has, it's really, really high. And, you know, I'm a chiropractor. I don't make a diagnosis unless it's musculoskeletal. But if your hair is brittle and falling apart, what do you think your musculoskeletal system's doing? So we have to address that. And really, you've gone all those years and nobody ever, you know, said anything about it. And your free T3 is a 2.6. I told her. I said, you're the one that's 35 miles an hour on Interstate 20, and you're going to get your butt run over. She says, I can't even get on I-20. I'm so tired. Yeah. And so that might lead us into our next question from James. He wants to know, how do you know when you need to detox? 
you know you need to detox every day because our planet is really and truly that polluted. It's a lot worse than what it was in the 70s. Now, we're still here, so I'm sure God has a plan, and we can still be healthy and happy. You just have to work a little harder because we have so much junk in our food in America that they don't uh, they don't allow to be grown in Europe, for example. We've been to China. Even though it's super polluted, they were way healthier than us, and that was really, really obvious. So you need to do it every day, and by doing to do that, you have to increase your amount of nutrients because you can't get enough out of the food to have enough spare to detox. And, you know, the liver detox, we've got gobs of people taking it, even though they don't have high liver enzymes because they know it speeds it up. Or they do carnitine. They do N-acetylcysteine. They do fish oil. And the vital detox is great for that as well. We have one called vital detox. It pulls out the heavy metals. Yeah, and people say, but when I go to the bathroom, either direction, they say it smells metallic. I said, well, that's great. It's uh, bonding with it and carrying it out. Yeah, vital detox. I I forget about that one a lot. Speaking of metals and things, Wilbur, who we love, he's local, he called us, and uh, he wants to know about cooking in coated cooking pans since they've, you know, changed around the... um, the coating that they're putting on the cooking pans and putting on different things. I think we used to have Teflon, and now we're, Lord only knows what they're putting on it now to make your eggs not be stuck. Uh, how do you feel about that, about cooking in coated cooking pans, Dr. Lewis? It's very, very toxic. I would never do it. Uh, and it's estrogen mimicking chemicals. And I love Wilbur because he does what? He does what we tell him to. He's super consistent. Now, he asks questions. They're always very intelligent questions because by him understanding that, then once he gets his answer, he has faith and he just continually does the right thing. And it shows on his lab. I think he's 72 going on 50. Literally, he he runs around better than most 50-year-olds. Stay away from it. I think the only thing you should cook in is cast iron, glass, or stainless steel. And uh, Donna has a question. She's having a total knee replacement coming up next year. I'm sorry, Donna, or well, uh, congratulations. I'm not sure which she, one. She was answering somebody else that was getting the knee replacement. Uh, one of my concerns is what the antibiotics are going to do to my gut micro- microbiome. I wish there was a way to make a backup to be restored later. Because she's worked so hard on trying to take care of all of her gut issues. so And I guess you don't want to lose that. Uh, she thinks Dr. Lewis is going to mention something about doing probiotics. Is that what you're going to recommend? Yeah, and again, it wasn't Donna having a knee replacement. She was talking to another guy. but uh, And she, she writes some really good, intelligent questions. Yes, probiotics for sure. But before you have surgery, you want to be off of supplements for about 10 to 14 days because... Not only does can it thin the blood, it also can speed up your detoxification process, and you won't be able to be put under as well. You'll detox that too quickly. But that being said, I was taking olive leaf when I had my surgery for my spider bite, and they came in. They would uh, you know, swab my wound and swab my nose, and they said, you don't have MRSA. Why don't you? And I was giving the lecture to the nurses at 3 a.m. about why olive leaf would kill anything they put in a Petri dish, and they didn't understand why I didn't get that flesh-eating bacteria. Uh, because they said the last 50 spider bites all got it. They said you get it from the spider or you get it from the hospital. Well, olive leaf is really, really good. Some people say uh, colloidal silver. I'm not really a big fan of that, although we do have it. But I use that extremely cautiously. And then we have some mega doses of probiotics, and we have one probiotic that is absolutely the most researched stuff on the planet and we're not allowed to talk about that any more than that. But we've got some high-class, viable microbes. Oh, 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 and one more. we got a probiotic yeast, the Saccharomyces boulardii. Holy jeez, that just goes in and gathers all the booger bears. And when you go have a bowel movement, it just carries out all kinds of nasty stuff. And I've seen people near death from C. diff. And all emaciated, looked like, you know, a walking corpse. And we just put them on high doses of Saccharomyces boulardii. And boom, within a month, they're they're fat and sassy, feeling fine. Yeah, now that we have it in a powder form, they can get it down a lot faster and um, be more effective quicker. So 
we have one more that Dr. Lewis can address here really quickly because we're running out of time. Uh, Martin wants to know what the best way is to prepare for and execute a water-only fast, and how long should it be to reboot digestion? I don't really know about the digestion part. Uh, when I fast, and I probably need to, it's a minimum of three days. Usually I'll go five days. Sometimes I'll go eight, and I haven't done that in a while. But what I'll do, I don't do water only. I do uh, a little bit of vitamin C. I do some bentonite with some fiber, uh, and that will grab onto the toxins. And then I'll do uh, enemas, usually coffee enemas. You want uh, organic coffee so you're not putting the pesticides up in your colon. No cream and sugar on this one. And then if I were to add anything else, I would add SBI because that is a leaky gut sealer and probiotics. On the probiotics for leaky gut, you can't go wrong with any of them, but I would do Target GBX. Very good. All right, and there you have it. And one other thing I want to mention about sleep, when you're laying there at night and you're thinking about all the bad things that happen throughout the day, Start focusing on something good. It really does help you go to sleep easier. Just focus on how wonderful your pillow feels. Just say it out loud over and over, and suddenly you'll be drifting away. And for those of you that are wondering how to get the lab so inexpensively about all of the panels that we talked about today, you go on our website to greenwisdomhealth.com, fill out the health survey. It will recommend you the lab panels. We do it at cost, no insurance involved, and that's how we're able to run so many and see them in depth so that we're not guessing, and we do it across the country. Thank you again for listening to our show. Please keep sending your questions. We love, love, love it. We hope you have a blessed week, and we'll be here next time on the Green Wisdom Health Show. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.